Bible out and let's read uh, through this passage. We'll start with uh, verse 5 of chapter 3. We're learning about baptism. He saved us. Boy, that sounds like a hymn we just sang, doesn't it? He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy, and I want to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. These things are excellent and profitable for the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join together in a word of prayer. We pray. Father in heaven, you have taught us in your scriptures and in our song that you do save us. You save us from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. You save us by the water and the word, the washing of regeneration by the Holy Spirit. And we ask you today to open your scriptures to us, to send us that Holy Spirit, that we might understand the power of your word and the power of your sacrament of holy baptism. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Throughout this month, we've been focusing on baptism. One of the reasons we've been focusing on it is because we started the month with baptisms of a family. And here next week, we'll have baptisms again of uh, little Dixie will be with us. And so why not focus on baptism? We're also getting ready, and perhaps I'll need some help there. Great. On, uh, for the big splash bash, here's a picture of a young man enjoying the water. And that's what we do at the big splash bash there on September the 7th. And we would love you to prepare uh, yourselves for the Big Splash Bash by inviting your friends and neighbors. We're going to have the super slide out there. Or what do we call it? The slip and slide. Peter's on that. We have other kind of fun games and a meal. It's also a time when we gather and realize we're all back in school. We're all back to our regular routine. Summer is kind of coming to an end. And let's regather and rededicate ourselves to the worship of God and the celebration of Holy Baptism. Baptism. So, so far we've studied the nature of baptism and the blessing of baptism. Today we're going to understand the power of baptism. Then we will have a baptism next week as well as conclude our sermon series on the significance of baptism. If for some reason you have not had a baptism yourself, I am available at the back of church. Please visit with me. We would love to discuss holy baptism with you as well. Uh, we learned from uh, uh, these last couple weeks of study about the nature of baptism. We learned about this from our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, who said, and again, the gold words are for everyone to read out loud. Let's go to our Lord's words. Go make disciples baptizing. Or as we translated it in an earlier sermon, uh, all y'all disciple. All y'all disciple is a fair way of saying it. Jesus is sending all of us out to disciple the whole world. And one of the ways we make disciples is through baptism. Of course, we also uh, by teaching. Uh, last week, we learned more about the baptism as we read from Mark 16. 16 here, uh, repeated, these are the words of our resurrected and living Lord Jesus Christ. Please join me in the blessing of baptism. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Boy, that sounds a lot like that song we just thought about, God saves. He sure does, and he uses baptism to do it. So we learned last week of the benefits of baptism. There were so many benefits, we couldn't quite get to all of them, but we tried at least the big three. Uh, the great three great things God does through baptism include, it works the forgiveness of sins, it rescues from death and the devil, it gives eternal salvation to all who believe the words and promises of God. That would be enough for me. That's a lot of gifting and a lot of blessing, but there's more. It also gives us the Holy Spirit. It creates saving faith where there was no saving faith before, and it generates in us a whole new way of living. 
Instead of living around our belly buttons, living around ourselves and our selfish desires, we live around our resurrected Jesus Christ, his will, his kingdom, his name. The name in which we are baptized is the name in the middle of our lives as we live as new men and new women in Christ. Today, we're going to consider these two points. Uh, You do not have to repeat this one. This is just highlighted for you. How can water do such great things? So we just heard about all these marvelous blessings that baptisms does, but it's just water we get out of the spigot. It's just water through the water system like you get at your house. How can simple water do such great things? We're going to investigate that in the scriptures, and then we will also notice the great things that are done, such as salvation, regeneration, and renewal. And of course, this is worked alone by God. We don't do it ourselves. God does this for us. Actually, before we get into Titus chapter 3, I want to share with you, uh, we were pondering baptism, and my parents are just now moving back to Texas. They raised us here in Texas, and they've been in Tennessee for a while, now back in Austin. And we were going through their things, and one of the things they found was my baptismal certificate. And so I was just a piece of paper, and you would think that something like this would be uh, not of great value, but it's of great value to me. It reminds me that these blessings are mine in Christ. We hand out something like this to those who are baptized here. And hopefully you treasure your baptismal, not only certificate, but the baptism itself. May 30th was my spiritual birthday, 25 days after my birth. What is your spiritual birthday? It would be something to contemplate as we learn more about what God does to the power of his word. Considering that, let's go to Titus chapter 3. I'm going to go to verse 7 and 8. Again, the gold words are here for you to repeat aloud. How can water do such great things? Here the Bible explains. So that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is trustworthy. I want you to insist on these things so that those who have believed in God may be careful to devote themselves to good works. The saying is trustworthy. The saying that we are regenerated and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The saying that God works baptism. His word is the thing that allows the water to be so powerful. It's not just water. It's water with a promise from God. Now think about other times when God's word was used powerfully. For example, when in the beginning of the world, God said, let there be light, and there was light. You see, God's word does what it says. My word does not do what it says. Uh, My children are now raised, uh, but when they were little children, we would say, go to bed. Did it happen immediately upon my request? Even if I uh, got red in the face, still didn't happen. My words are not immediately done. God's words are. Or when Jesus said to Lazarus, come forth, Lazarus came forth from the tomb. His words did what they said. And so is the case in our baptisms. God's words do what they say. Martin Luther wrote about this in what we call the small catechism or a small book of instruction. Uh, Those who go through confirmation here memorize this text. Let's read it through. And remember, the gold words are for you. How can water do such great things? Well, Luther summarizes, it is not the water that produces these effects, but the word of God connected with the water and our faith, which relies on the word of God connected with the water. For without the word of God, the water is merely water and no baptism, but when connected to or with the word of God, it is a baptism. That is a gracious water of life and a washing of regeneration in the Holy Spirit. That last phrase, the washing of regeneration in the Holy Spirit, Luther stole right directly from St. Paul in Titus chapter 3. That's a quote directly from today's text. One of our professors here in our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, Professor Scare, has dedicated an entire career to studying and teaching about holy baptism. And he talks about holy baptism being an extension of the power of the word of God. We read his quote, baptism belongs to the proclamation of the word from which it takes its life. The word of God 
is that which allows water to work such great blessings. Let's just look into the text a little more deeply and see some additional blessings that God gives in holy baptism. For example, here in Titus chapter 3, the earlier part of the reading, we discover that our God saves through baptism. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, who he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Are you seeing where there's a repetition in the words save and savior? Because baptism saves. God connects us with salvation in Jesus Christ by or through, that is, a means of grace. God can do however he wants. He can bring people to faith however he wants. He can use all kinds of elements, but he chooses and promises to work through his word through baptism and through the Lord's Supper to deliver his Holy Spirit to us, create saving faith in us, and sustain us in that faith. So we teach what's called a means of grace. There's a way of getting access to the grace that God won in Christ 2,000 years ago. And that means is the word and the sacrament. So we read in today's text that it's by baptism or through baptism. God is working his miracle. Again, the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. These two concepts, regeneration and renewal, go very close together. The Greek word for regeneration is basically, again, gyno. Ladies, have you ever heard of this word before? As in gynecologist? That's exactly where the word comes from. As physically rebirth, being born again, and renewal. You get a new, new. We want to study these two blessings of the Holy Spirit so that we might further understand its benefits. Martin Luther, again, focuses on the comparison between a natural birth and the spiritual birth, that both are very important and both are gifts from God. Let's read about it from Luther's sermon in 1519. He's a very young man. He writes many, many times on baptism throughout his life. Here's one of his early sermons on baptism. For just as a child is drawn out of his mother's womb and is born, and through this fleshly birth is a sinful person and a child of wrath, so one is drawn out of baptism and is born spiritually. So here is the delivery system, this baptismal font. It is the delivery canal of spiritual birth in the church, according to our Lord Jesus Christ. Regeneration, or new birth, is a little different, though, than renewal. They're not exactly the same things. One of our Lutheran uh, uh, experts in the Bible, R.C.H. Lenski, wrote about these two concepts and compared them. The difference between regeneration and renewing, as here used, is that the former kindles the new life by an instantaneous act. So regeneration, when we had the baptism of Dixie next week, she will be immediately saved through the work of baptism. That is the regeneration, the rebirth, the new gyno. And later continues and develops this life by a constant growth and progress. So the life that comes forth from this, this continuation, is the renewal. We learn again about it by uh, the second Martin. There was a guy named Martin Luther, some of you know. Then there was another Martin. His name was Martin Chemnitz. And if we didn't have the second Martin, we probably would have lost the Lutheran faith. He again explains very clearly in his basic instruction book the difference between regeneration and renewal. We get both in baptism. Let's read about it. Regeneration indeed, that is adoption and the forgiveness of sins. It is a complete and finished in believers immediately after baptism. So regeneration we'll hear again immediately for Dixie next week. But renewal is indeed begun in baptism and grows daily, but is finally completed in the uh, life to come. So our baptism is not something that's done and then is over with. It's something we live in every day. Our baptism is continuous. You could even summarize the Christian life as living out one's baptismal faith. You could even summarize one's eternal life as relating to baptism. That's the renewal part. And again, 
Another uh, commentator from our Lutheran heritage, John Gerhardt, explains the difference. A person is not only reborn through holy baptism, that is that he is, his sins are forgiven, and he becomes a child of God and an heir of eternal life. Next week, we'll see that right there in the baptismal service, someone becoming an heir of eternal life and beginning their life of faith because they will also receive renewal. He also is renewed. That is, he is given the Holy Spirit who begins to renew the understanding of, the will, and all the forces of body and soul so that the lost image of God begins to be renewed in the person. All of us are growing in our baptismal faith. We're all going through a renewal process. That's part of what's happening today. That's part of what will happen when we partake in the Lord's Supper today. We will begin our life as a renewed person. So as we study regeneration and renewal, we need to realize that God's the one who does all this blessing in baptism. For example, who had ever heard of someone giving themselves their own birth? There are no peoples in the world who gave birth to their own selves. Everyone is dependent on being born. It's an action that is done to a person. So also is the case for those who are baptized. They do not baptize themselves. They are baptized. They are given birth to. This is the same thing when you become an heir or an heiress. Here is Amanda Hurst, a beautiful young woman. She also is worth several billion dollars because of her great-great-grandfather, William Randolph Hurst, who started a few newspapers back 100 years ago. She is an heiress. What did she do to become an heiress? Not one thing other than be born. You have been reborn. You have been made an heir of something, a greater inheritance than Amanda. The inheritance of eternal life is yours. We should live as we are heirs and heiresses of eternity, not as those who live out from our belly buttons our selfishness. God alone saves. We said our God saves in the song, not our God and our willpower saves or our God and our intelligence, or our God and our money. Just God, God alone, stop there. God alone works salvation. We read it again in today's text. It says the negative, it's not by our works. Again, Titus 3, 5, not because of works done by us in righteousness. Okay, it's very, very clear. That's not how we're saved. So how are we saved? Verse five and six, but according to his own mercy, and it's of the Holy Spirit who poured out on us richly and through Jesus Christ our Lord. God's the one who does the saving through holy baptism. That is the faithful word. That is the power of salvation. That entire text and the entire teaching of God's word in scriptures. It's with this knowledge of baptism, of its nature, of its benefits, of its power, that we prepare ourselves to live every day more or less to get ready for this big celebration day here, the big splash bash. Right now, if you'd be so kind as to stand, let's go to our Lord asking him to help us value the power of salvation in baptism and the benefits of baptism he gives us. We pray. Lord in heaven, uh, perhaps we could dig around in the, the attic and find our baptismal certificate. Uh, whether we can find that piece of paper or not, we know that you save you are our Savior, and you have chosen by your mercy and grace to save us through the water of holy baptism because of the power of your saving word. Help us to live our lives according to that word and sacrament that we might be your children now, being regenerated through baptism, being renewed through the work of your spirit, and be your children and the heirs of yet even eternal life by grace in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.